Model steam engines for beginners. The diameter and mass of the flywheel is relative to the bore and stroke of the steam cylinder. So what does that mean? I am a simple man, so I will attempt to give a simple explanation, entirely devoid of numbers and formulas. This engine that you see me currently working on has a one and a half inch diameter bore cylinder, and that's quite big. When you look at the size of the flywheel attached to it, that is quite small. So there's an immediate problem. A lack of inertia or kinetic energy to pull the piston over top dead centre. But it's not just that. If you increase the steam pressure or air pressure, it doesn't really matter. It's only really important with model steam engines if you want to run them slowly. This clip is running in slow motion for the benefit of the exhaust beat, just to make it sound better. It will run at this speed with the normal exhaust beat. On this grasshopper beam engine, the flywheel is of the type normally used on Stuart one-inch diameter cylinder models. On the other hand, this engine, a Stuart S50, only has a cylinder bore diameter of 5 eighths of an inch but it still needs the same amount of weight relatively around the edge to make it go over top dead centre. This next engine is a very old brass engine, not particularly well made, possibly an apprentice piece, and the flywheel is much larger and a good deal heavier than the one on an S50. The timing of this engine is not perfect, but it runs OK. Everything rattles about. I did actually put this right when I finished rebuilding it. This next engine is not a proprietary model, it's a freelance one and it's absolutely beautifully made and it runs perfectly at all speeds. It runs slowly not just because the timing is correct, it's the mass of the flywheel. You can see it going over top dead centre in this clip and it does so very smoothly. Because not only does it have the correct diameter for the engine bore, it's also heavy. These are a collection of Cotswold Heritage engines and the one that's running is called an Aerial and it runs very smoothly. Once again, look at the mass of the flywheel around the outer edge. And now from the sublime to the ridiculous, this horrible old engine was one that I rebuilt for my friend James Evans. It's still pretty horrible, but in the end it ran very well. Why did it run so well? Look at the density and the weight of the flywheel and the outer rim is quite thick and it only really has a small cylinder. This was definitely an attempt at a silk purse out of a sow's ear and I never really got there but it works. This is an engine I worked on a while back. It's quite nicely made and when I finished rebuilding it, it ran quite well. Once again, this is down to the thickness of the rim of the flywheel and the spokes are pretty heavy too. Currently I'm working on a Stuart 10V model steam engine and it's a really nice little engine but it needs prettying up a little bit, it's very basic. And the main problem I have with it is I do not have a flywheel. So I got one. I was going to make one, they don't take much making, they're very simple to make but I thought I'll just have a quick look on eBay and see what's out there. And I found this one for only 11 99 Now I could not make one of these on my lathe by hand for 11 99 Certainly not if I apply my normal hourly work rate to it, and I'm not even mentioning the cost of the materials and the small grub screw. The only problem that I had, and it's nothing to do with the flywheel at all, the main crankshaft on this engine was quite short, and so when I put the flywheel on the engine the correct way round, the grub screw didn't even touch the shaft, so what I did was simply machine the other side, and reverse the flywheel on the crankshaft. So now, for the regular viewers, you'll be pleased to know there's some painting and you can make a right mess of these things. It's quite satisfying doing things badly just sometimes, so I just slap the paint on, because it's very easy to wipe it off. And once this thing is painted, I'm going to put it in the lathe and clean it up anyway. And finally, put the grub screw that you removed before you started painting in a safe place so that you know where it is, 
because this is a metric group screw and in my workshop if I lose it I don't have another one to replace it. This was a steam test of a Stuart James Coombs engine and the test took place outside my old workshop at the other house that I used to live in and it was sat on some boards across some old tyres from the Land Rover that I've just rebuilt for a second time. And although that's nothing to do with the subject matter of this video, I thought I would mention it. Once again, look at the flywheel. Quite heavily made, it uses a standard Stuart flywheel for cylinders of this type. In this clip it's not running very well because the timing was out and there were various other things wrong with it. Once I put it right it was OK though. I'm going to save the best till last. It is a Stuart major beam engine with a cylinder bore of one and three quarter inches and a stroke of three and three quarter inches. And to pull a piston in this size of bore over the top and bottom centre positions takes quite a large flywheel. Plenty of kinetic energy is required. This engine belongs to a friend of mine and he called in to see me and stopped for a couple of days and we had a really good steam up and a really good chat and we thought it would be a good idea to run some of these engines in the garden. This particular engine, as I've just mentioned, is called a Stuart Major Beam. If you want to know more intimate details about this beautiful Stuart Major Beam engine, please watch the 38-part series that I made when I did a ground-up rebuild. My friend Mike brought it up from Portsmouth, it was in a bit of a state, so I completely dismantled it and started again. And now, as you can see, it runs beautifully. And that's it for me for the moment, I'm not going to speak any more in this video, Unfortunately you can't really hear the exhaust beat because the thing is so precise and so quiet. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.